everyone, this is Lori Barnes, back with you for another video for Let's Talk Astrology Business. I help astrologers launch and grow their business. I'm here with my co-host, Marie O'Neill, who is going to introduce herself. Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another episode. I'm Marie O'Neill, and I am an astrologer and a life coach working with people who are needing to jumpstart or restart aspects of their lives after they have gone through trauma. So welcome. Welcome to another video. This month's episode is on building your website. The first question is, why do you need an astrology website? For one thing, you must establish your credibility. And when people are looking for you or wanting to research who you are, even if they meet you face to face, they're always going to go to your website. That is your storefront. That is your central hub for your services and all the content that you have. People are, I'm not going to say people are shy, However, what they like to do is find out about you and who you are. And sometimes they want to do that without asking you personally who you are or what your services are. So they're going to go to your website. And that website has a tone. It's going to help you build trust or help the client actually trust you because the website, it has its own energy. So you really do need to have that website to help you build trust with the client. It also enhances your online presence because we have a decade or so ago into the online platform. And if you don't have a presence there, it's really almost as though you don't exist. It's the way people are going to find you. It's the way people are going to learn about who you are. It's going to enhance your online presence. It's going to also help your SEO. When people are searching or Googling for certain types of services or certain types of issues that they're having, your website should pop up. And hopefully it pops up within the first page on the Google search. It's also going to be a place where you're going to build your reputation because you're going to have testimonials on there. And it's going to showcase those testimonials so that that helps to build trust and warmth within the potential clients so that they want to reach out to you. So that website, it is key. You must have it. You cannot do business anymore without a website. Anything you'd like to add to that, Lori? Yeah. Website is open 24-7, even when you're sleeping or when you're mm -hmm. out or on vacation. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you have your website and that it's built for doing business when you're not around. The other thing I wanted to mention is the Google search. There are different research statistics out there, but... For sure, all of them agree that Google has an outsized share of this organic search market. Yeah. So whenever we say Google something or search for something, most of those searches are being done on Google. So when we talk about SEO, search engine optimization, we are talking about Google, though it would include the other search engines like Bing or YouTube or Pinterest if you're using those platforms. The idea is that you're creating engaging content, you're putting it on your website, and that's how you get found organically with SEO. And Marie was saying how it would be ideal if you come up on the first page of search results. That is not an easy thing to do, and it doesn't happen overnight. So just want to say that so that you're not thinking, oh, I'm going to go optimize my page, and then I will show up tomorrow on Google. That's unlikely. First of all, whenever you publish a page on your website, it has to get indexed by Google. And then it has to see that your web page is the one to serve up on the first page based on what people are asking for. So it's a bit complex. 
to talk about how to do SEO in this video. You can definitely learn more about it in our classes, but we want you to understand the concept and how it works. And here's a quote for you to think about for your website. This is from Leland Dino, and it goes like this. Your website is the center of your digital ecosystem. Like a brick or mortar location, meaning physical location, the experience matters once a customer enters just as much as the perception they have of you before they walk in the door. And there's another quote, and it's not in this slideshow, but I'm going to share it with you. It's from Jeff Bezos. And he says something like, your brand is what they say about you when you're not in the room. And I think your website plays such a large role in your brand mm -hmm. that you know, we just, we really want you to think about your website as one of the most important things you can do for your business. Absolutely. And it should be consistent with what people think about you or how the impression that people have about you when they meet you in person or on Zoom. Your website really needs to be consistent with that. There, there can't be any incongruency there or it's going to confuse the potential client. So now, one of the things that you have to consider when with your website is the user experience. And what you want to make sure of is that the person who is on your website can navigate through your website easily. You want to make sure that the menus, the structure, everything is intuitive for them so that they don't have to think very much. As you are aware, people's attention spans are really short. And if they have to work for anything, they're going to leave your website and go somewhere else. So you want to make sure that navigation is easy and that the pages also load quickly. So that means that you'll have to optimize to make sure that the pages load quickly and that they don't get stuck and people don't see that little icon going around and around and around to load the page because you've lost them if that happens. When you are working on your website and you're going to design it, you have to design it based on the person who's going to be looking at your site. So designing it with the user in mind versus yourself. And I'm not saying that you don't want to have your personality come through in the website because you definitely do. At the same time, you want to think about your website from the viewpoint of, okay, when somebody comes to my website, what do they see? What do they want? What are their needs? And it needs to be logical, needs to have a logical flow. You also want to make sure that the search functionality is easy to use. So if you have your services tab up there, you know, the drop down is it easy uh, for people to search what it is they're looking for. I mean, do you have that little search box up there? Can people put in keywords and search for things on your website. So you wanna make sure that people can search your website easily for what it is they're looking for. What you want is to make sure that people can search for what it is they're looking for on your website easily. And they need to be able to have that search function there on each page or have an icon there on the side or somewhere on your website so that they don't have to go searching for what it is they're looking for, or go searching for your services. You also want to make sure that you have an accessible design feature. And what we mean by accessible design is can people who are hearing impaired or sight impaired view your website? Accessible design is a technical term that is used for this particular feature. So this is where you would need to make sure that if you have pictures there on your website, that a person who is sight impaired will be able to know what that picture is. And there's a particular way that you do that. Those are called alt tags and they are important 
they are one of the things that the algorithm will look for when it's deciding how well you've done your SEO, how optimized have you made your page. And as you probably know, algorithms are constantly changing. So I can't tell you like, is that top five things that it looks for or is it top 10? I just know it is one of those things. And it's always good to have an optimized website that is also accessible for the sight and hearing impaired. So definitely put those alt tags in there. And basically what that is, they're text words that describe your image. So if for some reason somebody is trying to access your page and it's loading slowly, then that image text will come up also. But it's mostly for the people who are unable to visually see your website that the graphic images that you have have the descriptive text. And if you are using an image for text, you definitely want to have that text in an alt tag. So you can learn more about that by doing a quick search because it's a common thing and you will learn more about it with a quick search. I wanted to mention real quick that one of the common mistakes that people make when they're building their website and not using a developer like you're doing it yourself is that you can see these really cool videos or find these amazing images and they're really large. And what happens with really large files is that they take a really long time to load. So yeah. the person sitting there waiting for your video to load or waiting for your really big image to load could get bored and just leave your site. That's called a bounce. That's an analytic measurement that you can see. How many times do people come to my site and bounce because they didn't want to wait? Now they can bounce because your website opened and they don't find what they're looking for, but they can also bounce because it's taking too long to load. So do be careful about using video and images. You want to use a lot of images and videos are awesome, but make sure that you've compressed them so that they don't take so long to load. And there's other things that you can do. There's what's called a lazy load, which means it loads everything else and it doesn't load your images until the person scrolls to that section or like if you have the image at the top or a video at the top and it takes a long time to load, it still loads other things and it may do one of those alt text presentations where it puts that text there so people know what's coming, but it's gonna take a while for it to pop up. So there's ways to work around it, but the best practice is to just make your files as small as possible and when you first start. And then navigation, just to say user experience is all about navigation. You definitely want a navigation bar, usually at the top of your website. Sometimes you see it on the side and that navigation is for your user. It's so that they can see all the different places they can that they can go. They can see all the different doors that they can open. This is your store. Most of us astrologers only have an online store. We don't have a brick and mortar. We don't have a physical store that people visit. So our website is really important. <laughs> now we want to talk to you about the visual appeal of your website and the call to action. You want to have a consistent brand and a consistent look. So your brand is your look, it's your tone, it's your feel, it's your color palette. It's the way that you speak. Are you friendly? Are you professional? Are you informative? Are you inspirational? These are all words that you want to come up with that describe your brand. And then you want to make sure that that comes through visually and through the user experience on your website. You're going to use consistent colors. So you'll want to know what your palette is before you build your brand. If you're going to have a developer build your brand, then you hand them that palette and say, you have to stick within these colors. Of course, they can make them a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, but still they will need to stay within your color palette. The brand should be consistent through all of your pages and off of your pages, on your social media, on your business cards, in your services. Your services should have the same feel and tone as your brand. It all kind of comes together. It's very cohesive. Now your website should be clean. It shouldn't be cluttered. Lots of space between elements, between sections. And you definitely want to use images considering what I just said before about size and different types of media. That seems to work really well. If you have like a moving thing here and then a static thing there and maybe some mixed media in your art, like 
the one we have in the slide here, you have some mixed media there. You have the statue and then some cloud things going on and some clock astrology thing going on, or maybe just clock. I don't see any symbols there, <laughs> but you get the picture <laughs> that's mixed media and Canva or other design platforms do that really well. And when you, you mix media or you make an image out of a few different things that has your color and your tone, your voice, then it becomes unique to your site. And that's when website design can get really fun. You want to use call to action buttons, which you oftentimes just see as CTA because call to action buttons are used so much in marketing and especially mm -hmm. on your website that we just say CTA, it's easier to write. You want to make sure you have them strategically placed throughout your website. You don't want to overuse CTA and you don't want to underuse it. So mm -hmm. oftentimes if you have, say your services pages, you only have one CTA. You may have multiple buttons, but they're all the same thing. Book now, book now, book now. On your homepage where you might display a few of your featured services or course or you know whatever your offerings are, you may have multiple CTA buttons on that type of page. And then the CTA is related to whatever you're talking about. So on your homepage, you'll have your top, your header, your navigation bar, and then you'll probably feature some of your most important services. And each one is gonna have its own call to action and it's gonna speak to what that is. So if you want somebody to schedule a consultation, you can do schedule now. If you want somebody to learn more about your offer, then your button can say, learn more. If you want somebody to buy your digital course, you can say, buy the course now. Depends on what it is. You wanna be strategic. I think I've said that before and it's worth saying again that CTA buttons are really important and how you strategically put them throughout your site is important. You wanna think about that in advance. Your web developer will help you with that if you are sourcing that out. If you're building your site alone, then you really have to think in advance about that. And I would highly recommend attending a class or a course that can help you with that. And then just be sure that your CTAs are very clear and concise for what you want them to do. It is a call to action. You are telling somebody what you want them to do. So the words that you use should be directive. Once you put your website together and you have your CTAs there, have somebody go through the site who has never looked at your site before, maybe an acquaintance and ask them for their honest opinion on how they are viewing your site or their impression of the CTAs and basically the whole site. You might even have a couple of people go through it because it's very difficult to see from somebody else's perspective. You see it a certain way and the client might see it in another. So I'm saying have a couple of other people go through it before you hit that live button and have them give you feedback. And that doesn't mean that you have to take their suggestions and do it. And at the same time, they may trigger something of along the lines, oh my God, I never thought about that. I think I need to put it here or there. So that would be the only thing that I would add there. Some people have their websites so that it's a continuous scroll. I mean, they may have the search engine up top, but it's a continuous scroll. and you need to look at that and what are the call to action buttons as people, where are they? Like Lori was saying, are they strategically placed? The other thing that you want with your website is a responsive design. You really do need to look at that. And a lot of the sites that you use now or the apps you use to build your websites will do this for you, but it's important that you know you want to make sure that your site is viewable on, say, your iPad or your phone, your laptop, whatever it is that people are using technologically, they need to be able to see your site and it needs to look good and function well on all of these devices. So when you publish your site, 
check it out on the phone, on the tablet, to make sure that it is viewable and that it does look good. You also want to make sure that you design your layout so that it will adjust and resize visually on the other platforms. Make sure that you regularly check because sometimes, oh my goodness, things change and you have the updates that Google does or the updates that are done on the phones. My goodness, our phones are constantly being updated and our iPads. And sometimes your website might get out of sync with those particular devices. So you want to make sure that you're consistently looking to make sure that everything is crisp and the way you want it. You could even put a date on your calendar of you're going to check this every six months or at least once a year, go through and check. Sort of like giving a physical, having a physical for your website going through once a year and checking to make sure that everything is optimal. That's what I do. I put it on my calendar. That and my marketing plans, I'll do that quarterly. I check them, but it works really well. If you have it on your calendar, it's like, hello, remember to do this. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, end of the year or birthday or anniversary day for when you started your business, anything that works. But yeah, put it on there. I wanted to say that I recently looked at statistics. I was updating my statistics like I do annually for my class and the use of mobile devices continues to grow. It's a trend that's been going on for some time, but it's amazing to hear how many people do business from their cell phone. This isn't just checking. This is like actually doing business. And the, also the younger generations are purchasing things on their mobile. They're not waiting till they get in front of their computer for me, purchasing something on a phone, it's just, you know, I need the bigger screen. So I'm always amazed to see that these statistics are growing. It's over 50%. So the, the chances are that people viewing your website are doing it from a cell phone. That's why it's really important to have responsive design. And yeah. Or an iPad. Or an iPad. Yeah. Yeah. But for sure, cell phones. What you want to do is look at your website from the view of the tablet or a phone. But the other thing that you wanna do is see how it adjusts. So like if you're on your regular desktop, your monitor, take the screen and make it really small, like drag it over to make it really skinny, you could say. And you'll see how it adjusts from computer to tablet to phone. You'll see how that looks. Yeah. And if anything looks really wacky, then you can work around that. You can try to make it adjust more smoothly. So there's looking at it as the phone, as the tablet, and as the computer. And then there's that responsive design, which is when you are looking at it by changing the, the shape of your screen. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people minimize, they're looking at two windows at the same time. You want to know what's happening with your site when people are doing that. So that's just two different ways of approaching looking at a responsive design. Building your astrology website, actually building it, developing it, which is, you know, development, building it, same thing. The first thing you have to decide is who's going to do it. Are you going to do it? Are you going to hire someone to do it? It's a big decision to make because there's a financial investment. And if you decide to do it yourself to save money, there's a time investment. So what you're really looking at is that cost benefit analysis. Is it going to cost me more hours than I have to give? Do I need to source this out? And if you decide to do it yourself, you also have to consider your technical skills. Do you have the level of skill necessary to build your own site? Website platform builders are becoming easier and easier to use, but they're also bringing in more and more features because the average layperson is now able to build their own website, learning how to do that, what components they want. Now they want more features. So it is kind of this big learning curve, even if it's simple, because you still have to learn all of the different elements and then you have to make a design. So even if technically you're able to do this, do you have the ability to make a design, to make it look beautiful? You can use a template if you want, 
And then all you have to do is switch out the stuff in the template with your own. That's the easiest way to go. Then there's the platform that you're actually going to use or your developer will use. Maybe you want to go with WordPress because WordPress is the greatest amount of flexibility. However, WordPress it has become, in my opinion, more technical. Like you do have to know a bit more about development. It's also made up of a lot of plugins. So you're choosing this plugin and that plugin, and basically they're small little things that are designed to do a particular action, a specific thing. And then you bring it in and you plug it into your WordPress site. That can cause problems because plugins are usually made by outside developers. They're not made by WordPress itself, at least most of them. And sometimes they're inc incompatible and you bring in a new plugin and the next thing you know, your website isn't working. So you have to be ready to deal with the maintenance of a WordPress site, which can be a lot to keep track of. Or you might prefer to go with an all-inclusive type of site like Squarespace or Wix, where most of the functionality that you need is already built into the site. It's an all-in-one and it makes it really easy. You can use their scheduler, you can take payments, you can set up services. So it really depends on your needs and your wants, how much flexibility and design you want, and if you want to do it yourself versus hiring a developer, how much of a learning curve will you have to face in order to get your website made. Now, once you've de decided who's going to build it, where you're going to build it, then you get it built, right? And then you have to plan on maintenance. So there's a cost involved in getting your platform and building your platform. And then there's the ongoing cost to keep it online. Hosting is paying somebody to make sure that your website is available on the internet. And then the actual design. Now that is a big, huge decision that you have to make. Obviously it has to be within your brand and it has to showcase all of the things that you wanna showcase on your store. You're trying to make that decision on whether or not you're going to build your own website or you're gonna hire it out. You really do have to look at your skill set. You can say, I really don't have the budget to do this. At the same time, you have to weigh the advantages and the pros and the cons of each. And that can be a challenge to do. Are you going to be able to do the maintenance? Because you have to be efficient. And as you get busy, it might be more challenging for you to do the maintenance. All of these things you have to take into consideration. There is so much to consider when you're going to make that decision on whether you're going to develop your website or not. And I got to tell you, if you are going to do it yourself, then you might want to use Squarespace or one of the other platforms versus WordPress. I love WordPress and that's what I use. However, I don't develop my own website. I have a developer who does it for me and that was worth it for me. And when you're first starting out, you may want to start with Squarespace or Wix. That doesn't mean that you can't switch to another platform later on. You can, but if you want to hit the ground running and you want to do it yourself and you want to save money, you're going to have to make that decision how you're going to get this website built because it has to be built. And so one of the other things that you have to look at when you're building this website is you want to make sure that your platform is going to support how you're going to receive monies for your astrology uh, business. I mean, how are you going to be paid? Are you going to use PayPal? Are you going to use Venmo? I mean, what are you going to use? And so the platform that you are you are going to use needs to be able to support these features. Also, blogging. Are you going to have a newsletter? Are you going to blog? What type of newsletter are you going to have? Is this platform going to be able to support your blog post? You want to make sure that you can update your website easily. You do not want it to be cumbersome. But you want to be able to put your content on this website in as easy a way as you can. So also 
look at the level of customer support and resources that are available. You know, when you're using Wix or Squarespace or WordPress, also, is there support available for you? Is there support available for each of the plugins that you're going to use? Because you may need to be on the phone or checking their customer support and what type of customer support is offered. Is it just going to their site and do you have to put in a ticket and you're going to get an answer via email? How long is it going to take for you to get feedback from these different platforms? I just think that's so important what you're talking about. First, knowing what features you want and then making sure that there's going to be the customer support that you need to get those integrated. And of course, if you go with an all-inclusive or most inclusive like Squarespace and Wix, you know that you don't have to go outside the platform for most of your questions. How good is the customer support or is there customer service, right? I mean, these days, some of these online companies, they don't have any customer service. You cannot contact them. So you have to think about what do you need? Like I would have a feature list before you start shopping. That's what I would do. Start writing down. What do I want? Well, I want a blog. So I need a website platform that has the blog functionality. I want to take payments online. Is there a payment acceptance system built in? And how often does it pay out? I want to have my email marketing within my website platform. Well, some of them do that. Wix has email. You don't have to use their email. I'm actually on Wix. I use a different company for my email marketing. But if I wanted to, I could use Wix. And I am considering moving everything over. It's just right now, Wix functionality doesn't match what I have at Mailer Lights, but I think someday they might get there. And that would be a good reason to move everything within Wix. Mm -hmm. If you're using WordPress, you're going to have to use plugins for your different mm -hmm. things, for your calendar, for your payment system. And they're easy to find. It's easy to do. WordPress is an excellent platform. In fact, I think WordPress has more than 50% of the websites that are in existence right now, but it is going to be more work, more maintenance, because now you're talking about more than one company. So you mm -hmm. want to know what features you have to have, like your must haves, so that when you're looking at the different platforms, you want to make sure that they check all the boxes. Absolutely. Oh, and one other thing, if you decide to hire someone else to do your website, and I'm all for that too, by the way, because that's what I did. You need to make sure that they know what it is you want. Do they also offer service ongoing? I mean, are they going to build your website and then it's just done and you have to do everything else? And that's fine too. Are they going to service your website for you? I mean, you've got to look at that too, if you're going to have somebody else build your website. And you want to have your brand developed before you walk into this project because how can you yeah. build a website if you don't have your brand already mm -hmm. developed when i say developed i mean you have a mood board you have images that represent your brand you have a color palette and you probably have an idea of what you want on font those that's mm -hmm. the bare minimum to hand over to a developer because you could have colors that are pink, purple, blue. And then if you don't give your developer any direction, they're going to give you a website. Maybe it's yellow and brown. That's <laughs> and right. That's not who you are. So it's really important that you give them that information from the get-go. I wouldn't hire anyone or start developing without that information. So if you're mm -hmm. watching a video and you're like, I want to get my website ready and you don't know your brand persona, you haven't even started to look at that. That's where you want to go first, then come back to website development. And you can always hire, if you want to, a graphics designer to help you with that, unless you have one in the family or a friend who can help you with that. Or you find somebody who does that. Like I do that. I do branding for astrologers, or you can take a class. There's a class at Kepler mm -hmm. College. So, you know, there's ways for you to work on that. You don't have to do it alone if you don't want right. to. Here's another quote for you. This is from <laughs> Ahmed Syed, and he says, a successful website does three things. 
first, it's going to attract the right kind of visitors. We call them ideal clients. It's going to guide them to the main services you offer. So I get to your homepage and I quickly see where I want to go. Yes, I want that service. So I'm going to click on it. And then third, it collects contact details for future ongoing relationships. That's your subscribe form. And usually you're giving away something free that entices them to offer up their email address in exchange for that free thing. Now you have their email, it goes into your email marketing platform, and now you can start making regular contact with them. That's what you want your website to do. Once you have your email list, you have warm people, warm to your brand is what I mean. They yeah. are like you, right? They like you enough to give you their personal email address, knowing that you're going to show up in their inbox. That's what you want your website to do when you're thinking about your design. Oh, absolutely. You must have a way to capture people's email. So now we're moving into the security features for the website. You want to be able to protect your clients and also ensure credibility. So you've got to use SSL certificates there. You also want to make sure that you are filtering out spam and hackers and people who can just take your website. So you want to implement, you want to implement the CAPTCHA on your emails. This is, of course, to also block spam and bots. Have you ever had those boxes that you have to check that says you are not a robot, where you have to check off the boxes of looking for a motorcycle or all the stoplights and those things, I got to tell you, they're irritating as heck when you have to check those boxes, but they're necessary for the purpose of spam in the bots. Make sure that you back up your website material regularly or back up your website because anything can happen. I mean, I had my computer hard drive crash a year ago and I did not lose anything because of the website being backed up. Now, the website, a lot of times the content is stored in the cloud, but you want to make sure that you're doing the backups yourself to make sure that everything is up to date. So that if something happens, you can access, you can get back online quickly. And this also goes with, goes to the software that you use, all the plugins for your calendars. You want to make sure that everything is backed up. You want to make sure that your email is GDPR compliant. And that means the general data protection regulation. When you've received emails at the bottom of the email, you usually see an unsubscribe place. You might see disclaimers there. These are all necessary. I believe it started in Europe, didn't it, Lori, where you had to have this? And now it's worldwide where you must be in compliance. You don't want to be caught off guard because I'm sure you've heard stories of people being kicked off of social media because they're saying something or they're not in compliance with that particular platform. So it's the same with your emails. It's client-based. And so our potential clients have more protections now than they ever had in the past. There are laws being added fairly regularly. I'm on some lists. And when GDPR happened a few years ago, it was a big deal because it was the most strict privacy laws that the world had. California also has a pretty strict law, mm -hmm. CCPA. I don't remember which came first, but I, I think it was GDPR. And it put all of the companies in a rush to adhere to the new laws because it doesn't matter if you are in the US and GDPR is over there in Europe. If you have even one European client, you fall under the GDPR rules. Just like California had... I think still has the most strict privacy laws, 
But if you have European clients, you still have to make sure that you meet GDPR. And if you have California clients, you have to meet CCPA as well. So basically what you have to do is just meet the most strict law that exists. And right now it's like the California law, privacy laws and the European privacy laws are kind of like the standard, but I can tell you almost every country has them. If not every country, for sure, every continent does. And it's more the email marketing companies who have taken on the work for us. So if you use Constant Contact or MailerLite, Kajabi, there are so many different platforms out there. They're not even going to let you send an email without meeting the laws. That's one nice thing mm -hmm. about having an email marketing service. But if you're not using a professional service, maybe you're still using your Gmail account which I highly discourage because what will make you look professional is having your own domain and having your own email. Yeah. And it's not even that expensive. I think it's $6 a month just to do it through Google, not a Gmail email, but through Google, they can host your email if you wanted to do that. And I think that you should, it makes you look professional and then use an email marketing service to send your emails. And they're going to make sure that you are compliant mm -hmm. with privacy laws. I know when I first set mine up, I couldn't even send an email without providing the link to my privacy policy, which I had made using a legal form generator so that I was sure that it covered the requirements of the privacy laws, because they'll say you have to have a privacy policy. Like you have to, when you create your website, you have to have a mm -hmm. policy and you have to link to it. So that's one other thing to put on your list of things to do. It may not be the most important thing today, but before you hit that publish button to make your site live, you want to have your privacy policy mm -hmm. in there. Just really important. So these days with the secure site, it's that HTTPS, like Marie said, but what I've seen nowadays is up in the address of the website, it'll say something like not secure. There'll be like mm -hmm. red letters. You don't want somebody to go to your site and then be like, oh my God, this site isn't secure. I have to get out of here. So just make sure that you have the SSL certificate, your web host or your web platform. If you're doing all inclusive like Wix, that they will take care of it for you. You just have to make sure that that is in place. You'll know if you have the HTTPS as part of your website address. Oh my God, you certainly will. As a matter of fact, I get a pop-up when I'm on my laptop where it'll tell me automatically, do you really want to go to this site? It's not protected. And that's just my security thing saying that. And so if it's a new business that I'm visiting, unless I actually know the person, I will not go there. Yeah. And you start to buy anything, right? Like who's right. going to buy something from a site that's not secure? Like you're giving mm -hmm. them financial information and with the way that hacking is going these days Ooh. like don't do it <laughs> but you make sure that you you have <laughs> your secure site so you might be sitting there asking yourself like well how do I add captcha on my website well you do that when you create your form so depending on the platform that you're using and how you're designing that form like for example I create my subscribe form in mailer light because that's where the names and the emails are going. And then I use a code to bring it into my website. As part of that form, I tell it that I want that CAPTCHA there. And I have some control or some options over what that's going to look like. So that's what you're looking for. When somebody does your form, that's when you're asking them to say, yes, I'm a human or check the boxes that contain the motorcycle. That's where you're doing it. It's not usually some random place on your website. It's where you are collecting information from somebody. All right. Branding consistency. We've already referred to this a bit before, and it's just so important. You want to have your website tone, voice, all consistent, your brand consistency, your websites where it all goes into and flows out of. So have that palette, that color palette. There is a really cool website that I use. It's called Coolers, C-O-O-L-E-R-S. I think it's a .com. You'll find it pretty quickly. You can build a palette there. You can build a palette in Canva. There's 
easy ways to build it. The way I do it and the way I teach it in my class, Marketing for Astrologers, is that I have you start with a mood board. So you go into Canva or whatever visual creation platform you use and you start looking at images you search for images and when you find images that you like and the colors that you like so it's not just the colors it's also what's happening in that image does it represent your brand you make a collage you make a mood board for your brand then you can take that you can upload it into that site coolers and it will create a palette for you so that's the easy way to do it that's how i do it but you definitely want to do it. You want to have images on your website. Images are really important. They tell stories. And with people's patience level these days, mm -hmm. they are scanning. They're not typically reading. And I'm not making that up. That is a research-based fact. You will be happy to know, I hope, that there are actually programs that can watch a person's eye when they're looking at websites. And they have this infrared coloring thing, and it will show where people's eyes go on pages. So they really do know the typical reading behavior of consumers online. Keep that in mind. Yeah. That's why people <laughs> put tape up over their camera. It's pretty wild what <laughs> they can do these days. So you want to have a mix, right? You want to have a mix of images. <laughs> you want to have text. I'm not saying don't use it. I'm just saying that you want to use it in brevity. You want to get mm -hmm. to the point. You don't want to be cryptic or yeah. you know, poetic with your copy text. Be poetic in places where it's appropriate. But when you're talking about your website and you're trying to offer this easy navigation, this user-friendly navigation, you want to give them the information they need and then have them click for that longer type of text. And then thinking about your other channels, it needs to resonate with your social media, any kind of print you do, any advertising you do, any conference materials, wherever you show up, your brand should look the same. And it's okay to evolve. I've definitely evolved my branding. In fact, I have a whole rebrand that's hopefully going to be released soon. And it's just because over the years, you grow, you evolve, you develop more into your niche, or you develop into a niche that maybe wasn't there when you started. So whenever you make those changes, you have to think about how am I going to carry this through my brand persona, through my color, through my vibe, through my tone, and make updates as you need. Remember to make them in all of the different places. And that can be quite time consuming. So you want to put a strategy behind it and break it up into smaller tasks, put them on your calendar so you remember to get them done and just be consistent. I definitely agree with that, Lori. And one thing is don't stress about getting this right and taking too much time to get started. You want to do your best putting your website together and, and getting everything that you need be okay with having to change things. You don't want to overthink. You want to think for sure and come up with your templates and your color palette and all that. But be okay with shifting it. Because remember, you've got to go through your website at least once a year and you know do some updates, a few updates here or there. Technology changes, people's temperament changes. When I first started as an astrologer, you used more text than you did images. You might've had images there, but now you use more text. You used to use more text, but now it's different. And so you're going to pivot, maybe not a regular basis, but every three, four years, you're going to be pivoting because people's attention spans change, what they're drawn towards changes. So make sure that you go ahead and yes, take all of these suggestions to heart and do your best with them and click that button that says your website is live without waiting a year or two saying, oh my God, or worrying. I'm not, I don't know if this is right or that or that's right or whatever. You'll know. Click the button, go for it. All of this information, we're giving you the best practices as of right now in a quickly changing technological field. 
but don't let that stop you. So I love that, Marie. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying that. Because yeah, you don't want to get stuck feeling like it's not ready or it's not good enough because you, you do have to get your business open. So in that case, start simple. Get something out there, your homepage and a service and an about you page and the legal stuff that you have to have. Just get going. It yeah. is. It's much better to just get going. Just get out there and do it and edit periodically. You know, when you think of something, oh, I want to add this, go do it. Your site's already live. The other part to this is you want to make sure that on your website, you have the testimonials there because people do pay attention to those and you want them to be displayed prominently on the website. You want to make sure that it's in a place where the client or the potential client can actually see it. With these testimonials, I've seen them done in both written form and also short video clips. Sometimes you can have a mixture of both. It's whatever is going to work for you. I like the written testimonials, and yet there are other people who love the video clips. But what your work, what they do is it helps to build trust in your service, in which your service is who you are and what you offer. If somebody is on the fence as to whether or not to work with you, then having that testimonial there may push them over into that category of, oh my goodness, yes, I want to work with this person. You want to, of course, encourage the clients that you are working with to leave reviews on social media. If they're going to leave a review, you want to make sure that your social media is linked to your website so that the potential clients can see it. What I do in addition to this is I have my clients write a formal review and send it to me. I actually ask them for it. I ask them for it on my follow-up email because whenever I see a client for astrology or coaching, I always send them a follow-up email and ask them for a review. You can offer an incentive too for reviews with clients that may work for you because sometimes people are taking their time to write this review and it's nice sometimes if you can give them something for that review. Most of the time you, they won't need anything for it, but it's nice if you can offer it. You want to make sure that if you are collaborating with someone else on another project, that that is showcased on your website. All of this is also going to help the search engine optimization because the more content you can have on your website, the more you're going to hopefully move up on the Google search engine. Make sure that you keep your testimonials up to date. It's fascinating because if you're using videos for your testimonials, remember people's hairstyles change. <laughs> Make sure that you don't have people on there who have that bouffant hairstyle. I'm being facetious here, but you want to make sure that they are current because sometimes you can look at these testimonials and you can tell what era that testimonial came from based on the clothes that the person is wearing or their hairstyle or their makeup. And so you want to regularly update those too. And it also helps with the search engine. There is a new section that I see on many, many websites that is called as seen on or as featured in. So if you've been published or yeah. if you teach at Kepler College or you presented a webinar, or maybe you're on our YouTube channel, you could be like as seen on Kepler College. If mm -hmm. you've been published in the Evolving Astrologer, Opus Magazine, you can be as seen on. And as you grow your business, you might get invited to make an appearance on television or to get published in a widely printed magazine like Cosmopolitan or Elle. You will see this on some astrologers' websites who have been published a lot. It'll just be a section and it has the logos as seen on or as featured in. So if you want to include that on your website, I encourage that. And then the other thing that I see and this is more on the marketing side, like marketing people who are marketing to marketers. They 
tend to have bigger, longer lists and they get the testimonials on their social media and they take screenshots. And then on their website, they have all these images of the testimonial, but you can clearly see it's a social media post and they'll just like have 20 of them, you know, like you're just scrolling mm -hmm. through these things. I don't know that we need 20 different screenshots of testimonials, but you are welcome to do that. If you have them and they're really good, like I would select at least a few of them and get them on your website. So it's your choice. Mm -hmm. Those are just some other ideas of how you can get testimonials and social proof on your website. So social proof, that's like taking those snapshots from the, the different social media platforms or being published and being able to put the logos of those other companies who have featured you on your site. Now for some exciting stuff your payment and appointment systems. <laughs> Yay, just what everybody wants. I will say that Marie and I talk about this in the business plan video as well. And I'm pretty sure we go deeper into the subject over there. So mm -hmm. we, we cannot talk about a website without talking about them here. If you want to go deeper into that, we invite you to go over to the business plan video and the marketing plan video. One of the most important things to have on your website are the payment system and the scheduling system. And I guess it's the other way around. You want your schedule first. First they schedule with you, then they pay you. <laughs> but what you want is for this to be entirely automated where your ideal client can visit your site 24 seven and purchase something from you 24 seven. You wanna make it super easy. You take yourself completely out of the mix and let it just automatically happen magically show up on your calendar and get that magical email in your inbox that says, so-and-so just paid you. And it's like, yay. And then you see the money in your bank account and you see the appointment on your calendar and you see in Zoom, it's already been created there as well. So all you have to do is show up, prepare the chart and show up. So use a scheduling tool or scheduling platform use a payment platform. And this is gonna depend on the platform that you choose. If you're gonna go with WordPress, you're gonna be choosing plugins. If you go with an all-inclusive like Wix or Squarespace, it's going to all be built into that platform. So it just depends on which one you choose. It is important that you have multiple payment methods because different people, different countries have different preferences and even in different abilities to pay you. And basically what we're saying is make it easy just to kind of sum up this slide. Um, we already talked about security. So making sure that you have your payment system on a secure HTTPS webpage, because you are legally obligated to protect your client's financial information mm -hmm. and regularly review what's going on making sure that everything is working as planned. And maybe you wanna update some of the things on your website. You may find that your platform has recently brought in other types of payment providers and you have to go and check a box. So maybe you haven't been accepting the Apple card because it wasn't available, but your platform recently added it and you have to go in and look at the different options and check that box because it's not always automatic. They may have added it, but it may not be added to your account. So you do have to look at those things. It's a big deal how you're going to receive payments. I do know astrologers who really don't use any of the platforms. They're leery of them. And yet you are selling yourself short, so to speak, if you don't use some of these platforms because that is sometimes the only way that you can work with a client. I mean, if they're local in your area, yes, I get, you know, taking cash or check or something like that. But even local, people want to pay using one of these payment options and they're easy to set up. I know that there is a fee involved with these payment platforms. And at the same time, it's necessary. This is something that you have to decide too. Are you going to pass the fee on to the customer or are you going to not do that? And that's an individual decision. 
I've seen astrologers and other businesses that do both. My philosophy is I'm in business. This is the cost of doing business. I don't charge the client for that. And yet with some other businesses, I do see where they tack on a 3% charge if you're using one of the platforms, because even if you're using a credit card, the person who is accepting that credit card is paying a fee for every transaction. And yet that's their cost of doing business. So you do have to think about that part of it, but you must have a payment option on your website, or you're going to really limit the amount of money that you can make. This is your about me page. And don't we all like talking about me? Me, me, me. <laughs> I love it. We all absolutely love talking about ourselves, but how we talk about ourselves is so important because yes, you want to talk about yourself, but you also want to look at it from the standpoint of the client. What do you want to say about yourself that is going to benefit the client? To do that, you want to focus on the service benefit for the client. It's the you, me, and you approach here. So what does the client want? Why should the client come to you? I redid my About Me page a little while ago, and I made it more client-focused, highlighting your credentials and the value. This is going to help the client see your value if you're using your credentials, if you're putting your credentials there, because some people, credentials are really important and getting more important as we go along. In the astrological world, it hasn't been necessary to have credentials. It's been okay to say, hey, I'm an astrologer. And the client just says, hey, or potential client, oh, I want to work with you. But now we're seeing more and more where they're saying, oh, where did you study? Who did you study with? So the client is becoming much more educated. So you want to highlight your credentials there. That's going to help you. You also want to clearly state your astrological style, the how long your sessions are. What methods do you use? Are you an evolutionary astrology or Uranian astrologer? What type of astrologer are you? The clients are way more educated now on astrology. And a lot of that has to do with being out there on YouTube and doing podcasts and people are watching. And so they know what the different methods are. You want to make sure that you regularly update your About Me page when you get new credentials or learn a new skill, or create a new service, you can put that on your About Me page. So you want to also update your professional photo, because how many times have you gone to a conference or seen the astrologer on YouTube, and you're looking at their website or social media site, and their photo is 10 or 15 years younger, or older and it's incongruent change your photo and as a female we change our hairstyle does the picture on your about me page does it match so marie i can't put my my big hair 80s picture on my website well you could <laughs> <laughs> oh i laugh every time yes i grew up in the 80s and i had big hair and I will not be putting any of those pictures on my website. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, yeah, it's so true. You do want to update. I, I noticed that my pictures, which are only, I'd say, not even two years old yet, but my hair's already longer. And it's like, oh, that doesn't even look like my hair anymore. Yeah, I mean, the face may not change, but that hairstyle gives it away. And in some cultures, I mean, I know I used to change my hairstyle every week. Because I go to the beauty shop and say, hey, do whatever you want. And I never knew what I was going to look like coming out of there. But, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's a budget expense item. So it's something that you want to think about. Professional photos are not cheap. They're not super expensive, depending on who you go with. 
And if you have a really good camera, then you can also get some of them on your own. But professional photographs are, I think, a good idea, at least every couple of years. So you have a really good homepage picture. Oh, yeah. That tells me a lot about the person, their photo, too. And it tells me about their style. I see people who put photos up on their About Me page or even on their social media page that are not professional yeah. at all. Like you can see the bathroom in the background (laughs) or, you know, somebody is photobombing. Oh, yes, exactly. (laughs) And you do have to think about your niche and the client. Are you dealing with clients who are in the business world? Yeah. Or trauma and grief is going to look way different than somebody who might be your, hey, I'm your wild and crazy astrologer. That might be your niche. And then you have to Mm -hmm. be wild and crazy. That's why we say get your brand persona together before you do your Mm -hmm. website and get your pictures together too, because (laughs) you're going to want to make sure they're. I've got so much Virgo in my chart. I have to look professional. And those are the types of clients that I draw to me. So when I say professional, I mean, corporate professional or somebody who's running a small business, but a particular type of person is drawn to me. And you'll find that you will have a particular type of person who is drawn to you. And that is based on your style and based on whether or not that client looks at you and sees themselves. The About Me page on a website is the second most looked at page on a website. At least it was the last time I looked at statistics. And even if it's not number two anymore, it's way up there at the top. People want to know about you. You're out there trying to get people to your website, get them to subscribe. And as soon as they hit your homepage, if they don't bounce, if they stay, there's something about your homepage that spoke to them. They are probably going to go to your About Me page next. So the last thing that I wanted to say about the About Me page is it's really the What Can You Do For Me page. So when you're writing it, That's what the client is there. So they're at your page, they're reading your About Me page. What they really want to know is what can you do for me? So I usually start off talking about my services in the way that they help the client. Then I talk about me. I usually tell a story because people love stories. Then I might go into my credentials and then my techniques and that's that. So you can use that formula. This is another thing that you can Google and you will get tons of web pages that are going to tell you how to design your About Me page. So there's Mm -hmm. lots of extra help that you can find out there. Services is one of the most important pages that you're going to do on your website, right up there with About Me and your homepage, because this is how you make money. And the difference between a hobbyist and a professional astrologer is that a professional astrologer is making money in astrology. You are making your living in astrology. And that means you have to have something that people can buy. You have to have an offer. So you want to have a services page. You may have multiple services pages. And you also can call them landing pages. So if you ever hear the term like landing page, I need to develop a landing page, you would probably do one for a service because a landing page is focused on one thing. Your homepage is sometimes called a landing page, just to be clear, because it can be confusing out there when you hear or you read something about a landing page and your services page. Now, you can also have a services page that has all of your services there, like a box kind of thing. You've seen it before. Maybe you have three services, you have three boxes, and each box is for each service, and you can click on that box. And it can go wherever you want it to go. You are designing your website. It can go to a booking calendar. It can go to a landing page where there's a lot more information on that service. All the CTAs, call to actions, are to book that service. It's very focused. You can have a services page and it's just one service. That's all you have. So you have options depending on how many services you have. And if you want to build landing pages for them or not, but you do want them to link to a calendar so people can schedule with you and then pay. When it comes to designing your services, if you are just getting started, start with one service. Don't make yourself crazy and try to develop this really complex 
system of services, I would start with one thing. That way you can launch your website because you want to have a service, your about me page, your home page, and you know the things that we're going to talk about in this video today. Once you are moving along in your business, if you're trying to grow or expand your business, then you're going to add on other services. And it's always a good idea to have a variety of price points, like a low, medium, high. That would be a goal to get to, not necessarily where you start, because you wouldn't want to let that get in the way of launching your business. But say you've been in business for a while and all of you have on your website is a natal astrology service. Well, you might think about adding a package of astrological consultations, or you might write a course or an ebook, whatever it is that you're going to do. It's nice to have different price points. You want to make sure that navigation is easy to get to your service. So I would have services in your navigation bar at the top and also on your homepage, somewhere below your header or your hero image. Hero image is just a really big image. They're a pretty common type of homepage. But down below, you'll probably have something related to your service, a pretty image with a tiny little bit of information like a hook. It's a, just a short magnetic set of text that makes people say, yeah, I want to learn more about that. Or yeah, I want to do that and gets them to click. And of course, when they click, it goes to the landing page or the booking page. You want to optimize your page for SEO, and that's going to depend on what platform you're using as to what that actually looks like. If you're on WordPress, then there are plugins that you can bring in and it will do a, an SEO check for you. It'll just have recommendations to improve the page. It'll tell you what to do. I use Wix and it's built in and you you just look at the list of things and it'll be like green, it's good, red, it's not good. And you have to make a change and it'll tell you what to do. So you want to make sure that you optimize your page. And then in your services, you can include some special offers. Like every year on your client's birthday, they get an email with a, a special rate for a service. You can do seasonal promotions. And these would also be on your website or web page. Usually, I mean, a birthday wouldn't, but a special offer would be. And then you can have some special offers for referrals to your services. And you would do that after you've seen a client. And Marie already talked about how she mm -hmm. does this with her clients. She has a very good system and I can't improve that. So I'll, we'll say use Marie's system. And as we've already talked about, your services page should very much be in alignment with your brand. When you're growing your business, referrals are so important. So please do have some type of referral system in place that you can tell your clients about. I had one client who referred four people to me. That is invaluable. It's so invaluable that I offered her a free astrology session or her next reading. Typically, I offer 10% savings. My terminology I don't use discount because I don't like that word, but that's just me. A lot of people like it. I use savings or, you know, something else there. And typically it's a 10% savings or gift. And that's the other thing when some, when you have someone who is a good referral person for you, or meaning somebody who is going to send a, quite a few clients you want to make sure that you reward them because they are helping you to build your business. You're going to get more business from referral than any other way. Now, the SEO basics for your website. I mean, we've talked about this. One of the things that you want to make sure that you do is you want to have relevant, high quality contact that meets the needs of your user, the people who are coming to your site. It needs to be quality. It really does need to service the customer with what it is they need, something that is going to grab their attention. And so you have to think about it and you can pre-plan the content. You don't have to put it out there all at once, but you can pre-plan, okay, this week I'm going to talk about this and put this up there. But you also want to make sure that you use the alt text 
And we talked about that because you want to make sure that the site loads quickly and you want to make sure that whether if people, if they have some type of disability, that they can actually utilize your site. You also want to make sure that you regularly update the content and use long tail keywords. And long tail keywords are three or more words that are strung together because that actually narrows the niche, but it makes it easier for your website to pop up if you're using long tail keywords. You want to be aware about AI and how it's changing the search engine optimization. Sometimes with AI, or actually most of the time now, when people are typing in a question, AI will give an answer, but sometimes it doesn't list the website or where that information came from. So you want to be aware of that, but you also want to be aware AI is basically changing how search engine optimization is occurring because of that. So you want to focus on content that answers specific questions. For example, I do a series called Ask Coach Marie on YouTube, answering questions. I list the question and I give the answer there. So that's done for a reason. It's going to make it easier for people to find me because I'm answering a specific question. So AI will pick that up. You want to make sure that your site is mobile friendly. We talked about that and make sure that it's you've optimized it for uh, mobile, for your iPhone in particular. I say iPhone, but there's also Android. I'd like to just say a couple more things on the long tail keywords. This may be the first time you've ever heard that term. I think it's really important for astrologers because frankly, the pop astrology, the commercial sun sign astrology has pretty much overtaken SEO. If you search Google for astrology or astrology horoscopes, it's going to be incredibly difficult, if not impossible, for you to pop up in a search for that if you're a new astrologer. Yeah, if you're Rick Levine, you're going to do that. But if you haven't already gotten to that status with, you know, that many followers, you're probably not going to get there on a super popular search keyword. So long tail is a longer keyword. Like uh, Marie said, three words or more, even though less people will be searching for that, you're going to come up for those people who are searching for that. So hopefully you follow that. It's the idea of quality over quantity. And if you want to get found in this madness of so much information being produced every day, you have to niche for one and then use your long tail keywords. For example, if you do trauma, if your astrology business is really focused on helping people who have experienced trauma, then you are going to develop content that has those words in it. And you're going to use those words as your keywords. And when we say keyword, we mean first that you've searched it to see what the statistics say about people searching for that long tail keyword. And whatever you choose to use, you're going to use that in your title, in your header, especially the first header that comes on that page. And you're going to use it in the text of that page. And we're way past the days when you could put whatever words you wanted in some of the code to get ranked on Google. That's long, long, long gone. Google is going to read your page. YouTube is listening to your video. It already knows what's in your content and it knows if you're actually talking about that keyword, which is in your title, in your first header and headers after that, or if not, if you labeled it this in your title and then you talk about something completely different and you are trying to get high rankings on Google, it's not going to happen. So you have to know that it can read everything that you're doing. It knows what you're saying. So if you want to get found for your niche, for your keyword, you have to use it frequently and you really do want to research that in advance. I think it's hard with astrology because 
commercial and pop astrology has really taken over, but you still can. You can use keyword search programs. There's a few of them out there. If you use YouTube, TubeBuddy is a really good one. There's keyword extension. And I can't think of other ones off the top of my head, but you can Google for them and you can find them. AI is also capable of helping. So this is just another reminder to think about accessibility. I have a friend who's an astrologer and has some sight restrictions and it she really helped open my eyes to how people with disabilities can really be left out in the cold. And it doesn't take that much extra work to add some alt tags to your website. So this is just a reminder of the concept and the why behind wanting to do that. Now we're going to move into analytics and performance tracking. This is something that you're going to do after you've published your website. And if you're on social media, your analytics there are very important as well. We're focused on website, so I'm not going to talk about social media. But in terms of analytics, you want to look at analytics wherever you can get them, especially the free analytics. You don't have to pay. You can pay to get more, but you can get so much for free. For one, you can get Google Analytics, which is going to give you great information. Then you can get analytics directly from your website. So whatever platform you go with, you just have to see where their analytics are and what they offer you. And the thing is, you want to think about what's actually going to help you because sometimes there's so much in analytics, it's like information overload and you don't even know what to do with it all. So what are the important things that you want to track? Conversion rates are usually the most important. You know, how many people subscribed to my email? How many people visited my blog page? How many people watched my YouTube video? Again, I don't want to jump over to social media, but if you were on social, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, they all have different analytics. They're not all going to give you the same thing. Each platform decides what that analytical page is going to look like and what they're going to offer you. Think about I would say three key performance indicators, KPIs, that is a term used in most businesses, definitely large businesses. They always know what they want to track, what's going to tell them information that's useful. So you have to decide like what's going to be useful for you. And then you might adjust what analytics you're tracking. What is important for you now may not be as important in three years, or you may change how you use that information. So you want to think about that. I'd say like an annual review of what you're doing with your analytics would be a good idea, especially if you're updating your marketing plan every year, because that's where you're going to put your measurements. That's where you're going to put what you're tracking and what your goal is. So every year, if you put it on your calendar, that you're going to go in and you're going to check your marketing mm -hmm. plan, check your progress, look at your benchmarks. You know, you wanted to get to X amount of email subscribers or X amount of followers or have X amount of your blogs read or X amount of people on your email list become clients. Like there's lots of indicators to track, but you don't want to spend so much time on analytics that it impairs what you're trying to do with your services and your clients. That isn't something that we can tell you. What we can do is just let you know that you should have some key performance indicators to track. You should know why you're tracking them. And that information should speak to how to grow your business whenever you're looking at timeframes. So you definitely want to set up a goal. You usually will have some sort of funnel and it can be very simple. Like I have a website, people go to my website, they click buy, and then I do a service. And that's a very simple funnel. Most people are using email marketing. So their funnel is I create this really cool blog or this video. I email my people. They watch my video or blog. And after time, they like my material so much, they become my client. Mm -hmm. Another funnel could be when you go on social media, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, and you are doing content there. And people say, oh, that's interesting. And then over time, they click on something and end up at your website, usually because you're giving away something for free. 
and they subscribe. So that's a conversion from social media to your email list. These are all ideas of things that can be very useful for you when you're in business. You definitely want to make sure that whatever you're tracking, that you use that to speak to your marketing strategy. Make sure that you keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate things because you can drive yourself crazy with that. Keep your funnel simple. And as Louie was talking about, make sure that you are tracking just certain analytics with the blog that I do. I know what my open rate is. And that is important because that tells me, oh, people are really interested in this. Now, how long it takes an individual to read my blog over time and then contact me could be a year, could be next week. You just never know. But looking at the analytics is going to tell you what you're doing right and if you need and what you might not be doing right and what you might need to tweak. Are people opening your websites and how long are they on there? How long are they reading your blog? How, you know, their click through and that sort of thing, because that's important too. I know that I believe it's YouTube that is looking at how long a person stays on your video, how long they watch it. And are they watching the commercials that are there? So make sure that you keep it simple and you just pick out a couple of analytics, not the whole thing, but look at what's going to be beneficial for you. Now, the content strategy, this is so huge. You have to look at your temperament and your style when you're coming up with the content strategy. You want to make sure that whatever it is you do is something you can be consistent with over time. And when I say consistent, I mean for a long time. So if you are someone who likes to write, then you want to make sure that you use writing as the dominant way that you're putting content out there versus videos. I prefer videos and podcasts. I mean, Jim and I love to write too, but I love videos and podcasts and things like that. It's just my style. But look at your style and develop a plan for regular posts. When I knew I was going to restart my newsletter, I actually created a month's worth of posts ahead of time before that launch date, which gave me a month's lead time. And so you can do that with your blog post. With your videos, you can you can do a month's worth of videos in one sitting. You just have to make sure that you change your shirt in between. <laughs> so people know, they don't think, oh my goodness, she sat and did all those video posts at once. So there's ways to do that when you're planning your posts and, and your videos look at how much time you have available because that's going to play into the plan. The other thing is when you first start doing something, the time that it takes to do it is longer than it may be six months down the line. Don't beat yourself up if it takes you far longer to create that blog post or that video in the beginning, because as you go along, you're going to tighten that up. Make sure that your content is aligned with your niche and make sure you're giving clients what they want. So you're looking at their interests and their needs. You can find that out easily by going to other websites and YouTube channels where your niche is and look at what they're talking about and the questions that they're asking. That will inform you as to what you need to put in your blog posts or your videos. You have to be consistent. And this is where I say start ahead of time creating these blog posts so that you can get a few of them done before you actually launch. Anything can happen. You could get ill. Somebody else could get ill. You could have to travel and not be able to create that blog post or that video. And if you have some already created then it just makes it it just makes it easier. Do your best to try to stay at least two weeks ahead 
if you're going to be doing, I do a weekly newsletter and I do my best to stay two weeks ahead just in case something happens there. And remember that content is going to help you with the search engine because people are constantly searching for information and the more content you have out there, it's going to drive people to your website and to your blog posts. And that is so important. I believe it's necessary. Review and refine your content strategy at least yearly and see what's working and what's not working because you might need to tweak your format or, or something. You don't want to just leave it stagnant. I do think that when you first start your business off, that it's going to evolve. I mean, very mm -hmm. few people stay doing that one thing when you first started and not evolving or changing. So it's, in, it's really mm -hmm. important that you're not just looking at the content, but you're looking at your niche overall and your brand mm -hmm. overall. What has spread, grown, and some adjustment needs to happen. It's just really important. And when it comes to your website, this is where you are putting your content in addition to social media, but your website, if you have a blog, that's going to be on your website. And the thing about content is this is usually the way that you are going out and you're casting your net and you're trying to get people into your funnel. You're trying to get people into your ecosystem. So before you start your business, you either aren't seeing clients or you're not seeing very many and you may not be producing content. But once you open your business and you're seeing clients and you're trying to find more clients, this is the way people do it. I'm not going to say it's the only way, but I will say it's the most common way. And the majority of astrologers are creating some type of content so that they are relevant, right? We hear that a lot in the mm -hmm. news, like people want to stay relevant. And how do they do that? Well, they have to keep producing something new that keeps people interested. And this is the big switch before business or before business is open and after business is open. So before you're building your website, you're building your brand, you are putting together your strategy, you're deciding what content you're going to produce. You got to get all those things done and launched because that stuff is time consuming and content creation is really time consuming. And mm -hmm. you have to take the time that you were developing your business, wrap that up, launch so that now the time goes to content creation. Mm -hmm. I have heard other astrologers uh, who are creating content and it's kind of like, I spend as much time creating content, sometimes more, oftentimes more than the time that I'm spending with my client. And I think that this is a true thing when you're trying to grow your business. When you have a full schedule, you can't even take any more clients. There's a wait list two years out. That's a different kind of strategy. Need to know what phase you're in with your business. And we're looking more for the early stages because building your website is something that a new astrologer does. However, you might be revamping your website and hopefully this information will help you as well. But speaking to the new astrologer, the new professional astrologer, you're going to want that time investment that you need to develop your website and other things to open your business. You want to get all that done and wrapped up so that you can switch gears and go into content creation. Content strategy is a really important part of your business. And that takes us to evolving your astrology practice. Mm -hmm. Your website needs to evolve with you. And so you do want to plan to scale your website as your business grows. For example, you might add more services. You will add your new photos, your new pictures. You may decide you want to revamp your homepage, especially if you have a picture of yourself on the homepage. You may want to expand the types of services, like you may create a membership type of offering. You may create a Patreon account. You may add coaching where you're selling multiple sessions as a package. You may develop courses. You're not going to just stop once you open business. You're going to keep developing and you're probably going to develop your astrology as well. Who knows? Maybe write a book on some research that you've been doing. So your website has to grow with you. It has to include all of these things. You're not going to go and release a book and not mention it on your website. 
So you do want to keep in mind all the things that come with expanding and scaling your business. And some of the next things that you will want to do is if you have one service on your website, I would definitely think about adding more services or adding tiers of services. So say you do a natal astrology and you feel like, gosh, I could talk about so much more. I did all of this work and in 90 minutes, I covered 10% of what I prepared. Well, maybe you should work on a package and start mm -hmm. talking about why that's beneficial to clients. Why would they want a package? What are they going to get out of a package with you? So think about what evolution means in your business and envision it, like be intentional with growing your business, have some ideas about what that looks like and you will manifest mm -hmm. it. Sometimes you have ideas and then you decide to do something different, but you still want to have a vision. You still want to decide like, this is what I'm going for. And then you go for it. And then everything kind of evolves and expands with that. The other thing you want to do is stay up to date on website trends. There may be things that switch. Like right now, AI is the biggest disruptor that we're dealing with. So you want to think about someday having an AI chat box on a website is the norm. It is not the norm right now, but we're seeing it more and more often coming up on different websites. And think about the chat boxes that you work with right now. If you have a bank or a business and you know that if you go on their website, you can get the chat box. Like our email marketing service that we use at Kepler. Anytime I have a question on a feature, I know that I can click the get help button and immediately get in a chat with a live person. That's really awesome. But say that you're on a website like Canva and they recently added an AI chat box. So before you'd ask a question and all it would do is recommend a blog. Like maybe you're interested in this. So here's what we think you're asking about. Here's a link. And then they'll give you a link to a page. But how often, at least for me, way often, that wasn't really my question. It thought that I knew what I was asking, but it was wrong and I couldn't get the answer. So recently I've noticed that they have the AI chat box where it actually can understand what you're saying. And you can be like, yeah, that answered my question. No, that didn't. This is what I was really looking for. And it goes and tries to find that. So we're already seeing how customer service is changing with AI. And most of us small solopreneurs, we don't even want or think about having a chat box on our site. But the point is that these are things that are changing as a trend and these things can become expectations over time. Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. keeping your thumb on the pulse of design trends and making sure that you're in the trend and not outside the trend. Another example is the websites from 20 years ago. You can recognize them a mile away, right? You, you can just see it. It's like, oh gosh, it's got like this crazy color background and crazy color text and lots of text and hardly any images and this really long menu on the left side. Like I see a website like that and I'm like, no, thank you. You are 20 years out of date. And of course, keep your website aligned with your long-term business goals. You are a solopreneur. You have to have your eyes on so many different parts of your business. As you grow your business, your website, as you grow your business, it might be beneficial for you to hire a website manager, someone who does exactly what Lori is talking about, staying up to date on the trends and all that. Because if you're busy seeing clients all the time, and we hope that you have a full practice and that you're making lots of money and you're enjoying yourself doing it, it would be nice if you could have a website manager who periodically looks at your site and touches base with you and, and keeps it up to date so that you don't have to do all of this yourself. When you're first starting out, unless you have some money, some serious money, you're going to have to do this yourself. Just do what you can and keep in mind that you do need to consistently stay up to date on the design trends and make sure that you are adding services and that you're having new offerings for 
your client yourself. So people ignore designs that ignore people. And this is by Frank Chimero. You want to make sure that your design is benefiting you and that it is benefiting the client. And you're thinking about your designs based on the client's needs, not necessarily what you think looks pretty or what you would be attracted to, but what your niche, your client will be attracted to. And this is essential website components. And this, you can certainly take a snapshot of long list here, navigation, we're saying your services, your about me page. And a lot of this we've talked about, you want to make sure that you have a header and your footer there. Freebie offer has to be there, your testimonials, payment systems, make sure that you're clear on what the client can expect from you because you don't want someone to contact you and they think you're offering one thing, but you're not, or that you're going to do certain things and you're not. So you want to be very clear with that. I'd like to talk about the header and footer real quick. We didn't do a slide on this. Mm, and, that's true. Uh, yeah. And I just wanted to point out how important they are, that just because we didn't create a slide does not diminish their importance. I believe that you should have a header on every page of your website. However, your homepage, oftentimes you do something a little different. A lot of people use the really big image at the top. It's called a hero image. Some people use a video. It's okay if you use the same header on your homepage as every other page, but you also are just fine using a different homepage, but you still have to create a header for all those other pages. And the header is gonna have your navigation bar and it's gonna have some sort of visual image attached to it. So definitely make sure you think about your header and most importantly, what's gonna go in your navigation. And then your footer. This is actually a mistake I see happen more often than not. It's actually surprising how often I see astrologers' websites and they don't have a footer. A footer makes your website look official. And it's a really great opportunity to put important links. I expect to be able to scroll to a bottom of a page, no matter whose website I am. I'm on from large corporation to entrepreneur, solopreneur. I expect to see that footer. And I expect to be able to navigate pretty quickly to find something that isn't so obvious on the homepage. For example, frequently asked questions, your cancellation or reschedule policy, your privacy policy, links to other parts of your website that don't require a visual section on the homepage, but you wanna have a quick link. A course page, there's lots of examples, but those are some good ones, but you definitely wanna have a footer. And the other thing that you put it in your footer, and, and actually I see, often that there's like another tiny little bar at the very, very bottom that might be a slightly different color. And you put your copyright statement with the year and anything else that's important, but the copyright statement, that's usually where I stick it. I stick it at the very, very bottom in its own bar in a different color. Oh, other things that you could put uh, is your media, your media page, right? So in the beginning, you may not have a media page. I don't even have a media page yet. I probably need one at this point. But when you're first starting off, you may not have one, but eventually you will want to have one. And that gives information to people who are looking to book you for a podcast or to be a guest on a YouTube channel or to speak for the a television station, like a local TV station. They still do that. They still bring people in if you're in a big city, of course. But if you have a, a media page, it's going to have your logo and your picture and your contact information and in, any other information that you want to share for people who want to invite you. This is also important if you want to speak at a conference. There are some conferences where you can speak by invitation only. And if somebody is looking to invite you, you want to have a media page to make it really easy for them to see who you are and how to contact you and other information. So I think it's really important just to point out the header and the footer. And then I realized on the other side, the second bullet from the bottom, it says effective use of headers. 
And I want to clarify that that's a different header. They're, they're two different things. Headers are the text that goes above a paragraph. When you format, you format the header, right? Header one, header two, header three. So this is the text header as opposed to the website header that's at the top. So even though it's on here twice and it might look like, oh, they accidentally put that on there twice. No, it's two different things. And the reason why the effective use of headers is so important, why it's on the list is because people are scanning more than reading these days. If you have good headers, you're effectively using the text in the headers, they might just scan and read your headers. But when they get to a header and that's what they wanna know more about, then they may stop and read that paragraph. So how you design your headers that go above paragraphs in text pages is extremely important. And it also plays into SEO. So I just wanted to point that out. That's our presentation for today. We are so <laughs> happy that you joined us. We both teach at Kepler College and we want to let you know that these are our courses and when they run. My course, Marketing for Astrologers, covers everything that we talk about in this series, but we go deeper and we develop your actual marketing plan and we look at your business, like what do you need right now? So if you love this series and it's helping you with your business and you feel like you need more help, please join my course, which takes place in the fall. And then Marie, you teach two courses at Kepler. Tell us about those. Yes, I teach Fundamentals of Life Coaching and also the business of the business. So with the Fundamentals of Life Coaching, it is for astrologers who want to add a coaching service to their funnel, really, because coaching, I believe it's a wonderful way to create more income, but also to help the client because sometimes clients come to us as astrologers and we uncover issues that they have and then they go away. Well, if you are also a coach, then you can schedule coaching sessions with them. So the fundamentals of life coaching for astrologers goes into how you do this. The business of the business, it also talks about what you need to start your business as an astrologer who is using coaching. So both of these courses, one is taught in the spring and one is taught in the summer. Check the Kepler College store for all three courses to get the specific dates on when they are being offered, but they are always offered spring, summer, and fall. We don't yeah. have anything yeah. in winter yet. We have to do something about that. So yeah. anyway. I, I am working on that. I promise I am. And I'd also like to say that when we are listing the seasons, it's for the Northern Hemisphere. So if you live yes. in the Southern Hemisphere, flip the season. Flip it. Absolutely. Okay. If you want to contact myself or Marie, here's our information. We thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Yep. See you next time. Bye-bye.